All right, so I have a cool video today because behind me I have the all new from the ground up 2025 Chevrolet Equinox. This is the active trim. This is the first time we've seen the active trim in the Equinox. Let's go have a look. So three trim levels are available in the 2025 Equinox uh, lineup, and we're talking about starting with the LT. We have what we're looking at here, of course, now with the Active, and we have the RS. Interestingly, the Active and the RS, they start at the same price, they're parallel to one another, but they have some different appearances. They have a different usage, basically, behind them. And what we're looking at here in the Active is something that Chevy is trying to go more along the off-road genre now we're not talking we're going to moab and you know going to be climbing steep rocky mountains with it but we're able to come out in areas like this there might be a washout whatever it is and we're able to handle that a bit better it has uniquely tuned suspension not to mention an actually specifically designed tire general grabber off-road tires uh, for this vehicle that aren't aren't just for looks they actually are an aggressive off-road tire I can't speak to how it drives. You got to stay tuned for my drive video on it. Um, but from an appearance standpoint and a usage standpoint, these are really cool tires. They're sitting on 17 inch rims, by the way, 17 inch wheels. Uh, and I like the kind of contrast in the wheel. But let's talk about some other things. So obviously again, it's a brand new vehicle from the ground up. So that starts with a front end design. Now, between the models, you're gonna find also that not only is it different, of course, from the outgoing model, but the grille, the front ends, are different from one another in terms of the trim levels. Uh, and right now, what you're gonna notice in this one, if you if you look at my other walk around videos between the LT and the RS, we have this kind of nostril coming out here, which is a bit different. Now, the DRLs are all gonna be the same, so your daytime driving lights are up here, you have your headlights here, and then down there, you have your fog lights. So that all stays the same, but it's just how all of this part here is designed. You're gonna notice a bit of a difference. Of course, in the active trim, you're getting the black bow tie out here, this kind of like black kind of chrome here, which I think looks great. And of course, down below, we're having, you know, the grained uh, flat um, plastic down there, which of course is kind of what you need in that area, especially around the wheel wells and stuff as well, because these are the areas where you're gonna get maybe paint chips from rocks and stones and so on. So you don't really want that painted if, this is meant to be, you know, an off-road vehicle. Overall length of the vehicle uh, and height is, you know, not that much different from the outgoing model. It's more the width, about two and a half inches wider than the overall uh, width of the vehicle. Um, the other thing I really like is it's now gone to the two-tone roof. So what we're looking at right now is the cacti green color. Uh, there's eight, I believe, eight colors of this vehicle this year. Um, I'll put in the text if I'm mistaken. Um, but the cool part is you have the option for getting the different color roof. And I think this white uh, contrast, the white uh, mirror caps with the cacti green looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and they've changed obviously some of the design on the side you're going to see this kind of shark fin design um, that Chevy's talked a lot about you're seeing that in you know in the new Traverse uh, the Trailblazer the tracks and so on um, it's kind of a unique feature that they've got which rather than just having you know a full open window that wraps around you have a little bit of a break up and it's kind of just a unique design feature that you see amongst the lineup <clears throat> Heading to the back, you're not going to see any, you know, open exhaust ports on it, and that's fine. It, you know, it's not really designed to be <laughs> something just to show that off. Um, this is the all-wheel drive, by the way, and what's interesting is in the Active, you can actually get an all-wheel drive, or you can actually get a front-wheel drive model if you want to save a few bucks, but you still want the looks of an, all, uh, you know, of an off, a more off-road looking vehicle. You can do that. Now, underneath the hood, though, in the all-wheel drive versions, we have a 1.5 liter same as before, but it's now not a six cylinder. We have an uh, eight, sorry, six cylinder, <laughs> not a six speed. We now have an eight speed transmission uh, with new software uh, that's, that's powering this. If you get into the front wheel drive, however, uh, you're getting a CVT transmission. Uh, the horsepower is actually the same around 175, but we are getting slightly different um, torque ratings. It's a little bit more torquey with the eight speed uh, than it is with the, um, the CVT, um, but again, front wheel drive, all wheel drive. And then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll correct it in the text, but I believe with the front wheel drive and the CVT are about 800 pounds towing. Um, and then with the fifth, with the one, uh, eight speed, part of me in the all wheel drive, you're getting up to up to 1500 pounds towing. Again, this is not necessarily something that you're gonna be towing a lot with, but if you just have like a little uh, ATV or a couple dirt bikes or whatever, you can absolutely go off-roading. It would actually look pretty cool behind this, I think. Um, as far as the interior back here, Obviously, you're going to get, you know, the power lift gate here. Tons of standard safety features, by the way. But we're going to talk about more tech as we get in the front. You have storage 
underneath here. And what I was talking or hearing from one of the designers is um, the overall width of the vehicle is helping back here too. So you have a bit wider. One of the things I know is missing, which I found very interesting, is there's no longer handles back here to drop the 60-40 uh, split seat there. Um, you actually have to go to the back seat to do it, which you had the option to do before, but you used to have the option, at least at higher trim levels, to change back here. That is no longer the case. It is what it is. I don't think it's a deal breaker for most people. But again, there you go here, pretty pretty flat folding uh, seats. They have this unique looking interior, which it doesn't matter what exterior you get, you're always gonna get, it's like a microfiber suede with a, I think they call it, uh, it's it, it, it's a kind of like a leather material and then with the suede here anyways um, but this color doesn't matter what exterior color you get that is what you're getting heated seats back here in the back row I can say I can comfortably sit I'm six foot two and I can comfortably sit behind myself when I have the seat in a comfortable position in front of me um, so I think that speaks volumes for the overall uh, you know size in terms of leg room for the average person at the very least panel sunroof in this one here Heading to the front, memory seats you're gonna see. They actually have the ventilated seats in this one as well. But let's get behind the steering wheel and just show you a few things here. I'm gonna back this up. Oh, there's your, there's your start up. I'm gonna start the vehicle just so we can kind of get the screen up. So speaking of screens, let's just start right there, right off the right off the hop. 11 inch programmable screen in front of the driver. If I press this button, I can actually have the navigation up on there. Actually, we can do that right now. So there you go, that's pretty cool on your speed there. So it's all programmable. And then you have an 11, a beautiful 11.3 inch color touchscreen over here. Um, it has Google integration. However, just as a heads up, they have, re they have retained Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So unlike some of the EVs, we still have that, uh, that aspect, which I know a lot of you like, a lot of you care about, it's still there. But I will say something that maybe not a lot, a lot of you know is Google Assistant or the Google uh, integration um, is, has connected services free for eight years uh, when you buy this vehicle. I was That's what I was told by one of the tech people. I didn't realize that. Um, and it works really well. Like, watch this. Hey, Google, turn off the air conditioning. So you can see the air conditioning is on down there. All right, turning off the AC. Oh, look, let's see, the button's off. Cool, right? So, and you can, you know, obviously give it navig uh, navigations. You can ask what the weather is and so on. Um, you have Alexa in here too, which is interesting. And they actually said if you wanted to switch it, you can have Alexa be the default. But needless to say, there's tons of things you can play with in the screen. One of the things that you need to play with in the screen, though, uh, if you if you want to use it, sorry, I didn't press the button. <laughs> Watch there for a second. Is unfortunately for the headlights. I know many of you don't like that aspect, but the headlights are controlled here on the screen. There is no headlight control, you know, on the stock or anything like that. Of course, you still have your, your windshield wipers. By the way, this is an all-wheel drive. As I mentioned, again, you can get front-wheel drive. You can take the all-wheel drive off there. And there is different drive modes, as you can see here. So if I wanted to do that, you have your off-road mode, snow and ice mode, and then you have uh, normal mode. Now, as a heads up, off-road mode uh, changes the yaw sensors and it gives you a little more wheel spin. So if you want to spin out of a situation, whatever, you're on a dirt road, sometimes you need that. Uh, when you're in snow and ice mode, it actually has a little bit better roll on, slower roll on power, so you're not spinning because you don't want to spin on the ice and snow. And of course, normal mode is really going to use 90% of the time. And that is exactly what it means. It's just normal mode. Separate climate control for driver passenger. As I mentioned, AC seats, not to mention heated seats. Heated steering wheel um, and uh, adaptive cruise control by the way those are all standard features uh, the, the heated seats heated steering wheel and adaptive cruise control obviously there's packages to get certain things like this which is the uh, rear vision camera mirror surround vision camera you know thousand dollar option packages things like that you do have wireless charging in this which is nice and not only is it cool to have it but it's a really good spot I have a you know quite a large phone if it's in there nicely but if you had a smaller phone it's not gonna be rolling around and it's still gonna be using that charging system properly so I really do like that again the cost that is laid out you know quite nicely i like the finishing touches like this you know fading out and changing the design i like the design around uh the vents here a lot of cool things in this vehicle i can't speak enough of you know the interior design i really like it and again very spacious and here you can see one actually driving one's pulling in there right now in that same color it's the same vehicle anyways that is the 2025 chevrolet equinox in the active trim let me know what you think below